Thank you. All the distinguished guests have been identified, so I join my colleagues in recognizing their presence and thanking them for their participation. Um, uh, sir, I really appreciated uh, those remarks as a former infantry soldier myself. A merely an enlisted man would have been proud to serve with you. Uh, by the way, I, I'm sorry the artists uh, aren't here, but I sat next to the proud father throughout this service and ceremony. <laughs> And it was a real delight. And I, I must tell you, just as a citizen of any country, when you have uh, your own union, a national anthem is sung with very little musical accompaniment and a pure voice. It's just something very special. So, Dad, it was a great pleasure to be with you. Well, we celebrated your daughter's artistry as well. I was asked to participate in this uh, service, this commemorative, and I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity. And it called to mind on one of my several trips to, uh, to Israel. And my reflections are more of a personal nature, and I hope you forgive me, but I do think they're relevant. Uh, my daughter was, uh, I think, 18 or 19 at the time. And uh, we spent a week in Israel. And obviously, as part of that week, I wanted her to see uh, Shedrot. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And one of the reasons I wanted my daughter to visit uh, the community with me, uh, but I'd been there previously, was to see the, to, to see a community under daily threat of terrorist attack and see the remnants of the somewhat crude but potentially lethal armament that is gathered after the strikes and piled high outside the police station. And one of the reasons I wanted my daughter Leslie to see that was because when her father was governor, uh, she was a sophomore in our high school and she was uh, on the varsity softball team and she was in multiple bands and she was a aspiring young artist and she was getting good grades and suddenly I yanked her out of that environment in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and took her to Washington DC after the president called. And while she's a, at that time and at that age you can well imagine, I wouldn't say distress but maybe disappointment perhaps in having been rooted up and removed and plopped down into another world. Well, she suddenly made friends in much of the same thing. But it also put in context, I think, the minimalist nature of the sacrifice of those of us who are called upon to serve to defeat these uh, radical Islamic terrorists compared to those who have fought and served and died. It was an incredible lesson. It gave us an opportunity to talk about yesteryear to give her a better understanding of why her father didn't hesitate when the president called, even though I was not a counterterrorism expert at the time, and some people wondered if I was up to the job, but I would suggest to you that I, I'm a pretty quick study and armed with a lot of very talented and dedicated people around me who were able to, I believe, build the foundation. And I also recognized during the course of building that foundation that we needed uh, allies and we needed to look to countries and to experts who could, who could inform, enlighten, educate, and who had to deal with the constant threat of terrorism. And obviously, in many ways, in many instances, many departments in President Bush's administration looked to Israel. Many of our folks, I think, since that time have been part of this, uh, have been part of the ceremony, part of this uh, World Summit. It also gave me a time after reflecting on my daughter and the conversations that pursued from our visit to Israel. Obviously, this memorial gives me an opportunity to reflect on 9-11-2001. I'm ensconced as the governor of the sixth largest state, magnificent, beautiful, diverse state. I was in my home community of Erie, Pennsylvania. The sky was blue, hardly a cloud in the sky. It was that way throughout the entire Northeast. I was visiting my mother 
who happened to be at the hospital at the time because I retained my residence there. And as I pulled back back into my driveway, I was notified of the first Twin Tower being struck and series of events. And I ended up uh, later that day flying into a helicopter into Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where Flight 93 found its resting place. Shanksville, Pennsylvania is the community outside this beautiful, natural farmland. It was a beautiful and unsuspecting place. And yet, the beauty associated with that wide open field and the peacefulness was shattered by the crash of Flight 93. And I can close my eyes as we pulled, flew into that space and see, suspecting that there would be pieces of the aircraft because we've all seen the results of tragic commercial aviation accidents. But there were no low, large parts of fuselage and there were no large parts of engines and there was no large parts of anything. It was rather a large, smoldering hole. A beautiful, unsuspecting place, victim to radicals, whose conduct none of us in this audience and none of us in the Western world, and I would hope to say none of us generally around the world can rationalize in our minds. It is inconceivable, particularly in the name of religion, that one group would reach out with impunity and destroy and kill and murder the unsuspecting, the innocent victims of terrorism. It's a powerful reminder unsuspecting victims, because that's generally, more often than not, now that's, that's not necessarily the case in Israel, because you live under the constant dome of threat of terror, so unsuspecting that you are not prepared, you are, because of the ICT and many other factors. But you should know that the memorial at that site is befitting, I believe, the sacrifice of those who perished. Oh, there's a small educational platform, but the true memorial is a bell tower with chimes, and chimes that just ring gently back and forth, each chime, 43 for the victims, the passengers and crew, the flight of the flight. So we reversed it to a certain extent. I'm not sure it'll ever be a beautiful, unsuspecting place, but it return there's a certain beauty and calmness, and I'd say honor associated with that memorial. And when I think of the summit, and I'm grateful for ICT, as I understand, every year hosts this commemorative, this service. I thank you for that. But I also thank you because you not only honor the victims of 9-11, but the global scourge of terrorism has taken the lives of many beautiful, wonderful, unsuspecting people worldwide. And when you honor the victims at a commemorative service like this, you also honor those who perished, who go to the aid of those victims. Dozens perished because they ran in to help their fellow citizens in the Twin Towers. Several perished at the Pentagon. And one of the most vivid sights I have of the Flight 93 resting place is that there were multiple, dozens of emergency vehicles there. With all those small communities in that bucolic place, all those volunteer firemen, even some from Pittsburgh, jumped in their vehicles, rushed to the site, hoping to help just as I'm sure you do and we've done 
and we all will be called upon to do until the world understands that it is a global scourge, it is a global menace, it is a cancer, it has metastasized, and we must be united in our effort, one, to understand it, as this conference enables all those participants to appreciate and learn, and then to defeat it. There's a certain resiliency in our cultures. Obviously, sovereigns do what sovereigns do. One of the ironies, and as a citizen, as a proud citizen of my country, I have my, my ambassador, you're my ambassador, and my president have a point of view. This administration in this country has a point of view with the Iranian deal. But both countries operate under the rule of law. They're democracies. And regardless of the outcome of the vote in the House and the Senate in the United States of America, it does not appear that they'll have, be, have enough votes to overturn the negotiated deal. And while some may take offense, I must say, whether you agree or disagree with the deal, you have to understand that's how it plays out, consistent with the rule of law and consistent with the Constitution of the United States. That's how we govern ourselves. So as two proud allies, strongly held opinions, public and painful disagreement, nonetheless, on a day like today, you celebrate the rule of law, you celebrate freedom, you celebrate the both commitment to human rights, Hopefully you celebrate the long-term commitment the countries have to one another, to democracy and to freedom, and frankly, to resiliency. There's no country in the world that has demonstrated historically its resiliency, its resolve to protect the freedom of its people, its commitment to human rights, in its embrace of democracy than Israel. So today we celebrate those who also, and we recognize, celebrate may not be the right word, but we commemorate the victims, but I also think it's important to honor and thank on today those men and women in your country and mine and those around the world who have been commissioned by their governments to fight this global scourge of terrorism because we all know that somewhere in the future there'll be another beautiful and unsuspecting community or place where out of nowhere terrorists strike, take lives, surge of emotions of those who respond, disbelief, horror, shock, anger, sorrow, it's natural. It's how I responded when I got to Shanksville, but I was not unique. I think that was a normal response of people who care about people, who care about the need for the broader global community to accept the challenge associated with the global scourge of terrorism. And as Lieutenant Colonel pointed out, and I think one of the most important ways for the global community to ultimately to find ways together to combat this scourge is to remember those who have gone before us, who have been both victims of terrorist attack, those who've given their lives to protect their respective communities and families and countries, and those who wear the uniforms of service today to maintain those protections and the safety and security of their fellow citizens around the world. So it's a great pleasure for me to join with you this evening. I wanna thank you for the tribute you've made and the commemorative you've given to uh, citizens from 80 countries that perished on 9-11 in New York City. To honor their memories, but also to thank those who are responsible for keeping us safe. I'm gratefully privileged to join with you tonight. Thank you very much.